another YouTube. Let's get it going. Welcome back to the Every Closet. My name is Stephanie and along with my partner Ethan, we run a reselling business on Poshmark. We are now on Poshmark US as well as Canada. We're also on Instagram. Follow us there for the most updates if you just love reseller content. Um, today I'm coming at you with a video that um, if you were just gonna come to my channel and probably only watch one video here, I would recommend it being this one. You could also call this video how we sourced over 2,000 items of inventory in two to three months. What I want to go over today is our $10 bag sourcing method. There will be some caveats throughout. Um, we're not even currently using this method, but it is certainly a creative way to get inventory. First, I just want to go over what we did how it worked for us, uh, the details of what we actually did. Then I'd like to go over what I would change if we did it again. And then I want to go over a section of just examples of sales that we've had from it. I originally conceptualized going over everything we've sold and that is not going to work. I'm not doing another hour long video. Oh, you poor tired people watching me ramble. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go over highlights of things that have sold. Um, we still have a lot of stuff live, active, active listings in our closet from the $10 bags as well. So we're not done making money from them, but we are done buying them for right now. <laughs> Let me jump into it. So what were the $10 bags? If Ethan would be so kind, could you please put up here the listing that we put up on Facebook Marketplace and this listing has been live once in November, once in December, probably once in January and once in February for I think a total of maybe 10 hours. And then I marked it as sold on Facebook Marketplace. The post just said, we are resellers. We will buy bags of gently used clothing from you that you were going to donate anyway for $10 per bag. I would do that differently now, but that was all we said the first time. Again, we've we've made a return on our investment. It's just, I would tinker, but I digress. That post went up and in those four months, we bought somewhere between no less than 50, no more than 75 $10 bags, which means we've sourced around 500 to $750 of our inventory that way. It's given us, I'd say probably about half of the items in our inventory maybe over half, um, which is huge. We have a big inventory. It gave us a lot of inventory. Anything we didn't want to sell, anything damaged, anything for whatever reason we didn't want to sell, we would just put back in the bags and donate to Value Village like it was about to be donated. That is what we did. And maybe also we could put up here exactly the phrasing that we put, like the, the text of the post. And again, this post has been changed a few times and I would change it further if we were making it live again today and we'll talk about that next. We would go to them most of the time. A few people dropped off which was super nice bonus but we would go to them most of the time and do like a porch pickup, leave money under the mat, leave the bags, etc. Pandemic protocols. So what would I change during this method again? Um, something I would absolutely change is the post itself, the text of it. I would make it more specific from the get-go. I believe the first time we posted it, it literally just said $10 per bag of gently used items. It didn't even specify clothes. And when people would ask me, I'd say, no, yeah, we take everything, anything and everything. And that is how we got a lot of the hard goods that we're still attempting to make leave our house because um, it's like absolutely do that if hard goods is part of your business model, but it just, it's not a good it's not a good part of ours it's um we don't have a good method for storing it it's not our niche we're getting out of that the first thing i would change is specifications and if i were posting it today i'd put clothing only western style clothing only i don't know where you can resell like indian like saris and lehengas online um, I'm sure there's a place. It just doesn't seem to be Poshmark. I have a few for sale. They're still in my closet. They take up a lot of room and yeah, there's been like maybe one like on one of them and that's it. So I would probably specify Western clothing. 
Um, I would specify for women, men, or kids, lightly used, no undergarments, no socks. Uh, there'd be a lot of things to specify. No linens, no towels, no sheets, no pillows. We did have one person once stuff the bags full of pillows and then put a few items of clothing on top. That was incredibly rude. We don't like them. I'm giving you all these caveats, but most people did just give us regular clothes. It was very nice. But yes, that one person with the pillows made me real sad. So I would look for that stuff and I would specify that you're not going to pay them if you show up and that's what's there. Another thing I would change is I would not accept repeat customers. Okay, I would not accept any repeat customers or customers who say that they have over 10 bags. If you're decluttering your wardrobe in like a usual fashion, you're gonna get at most four to five garbage bags worth of clothes that you're getting rid of. Um, and that's gonna be once a season, not every few weeks, right? So if someone comes to you and they're like, I have more bags, they are wrong. They don't have more useful bags for you. What they have is a bunch of crap they threw together because last time you gave them money and it was really easy for them. Okay, so I don't, I don't mean to sound so cynical in this video. It's just, you know, most people are great. Some will take you for a ride. So the, I just, one of the ways to stave that off is no repeat customers and no one who says I have 12 bags, give me $120. No, they have 12 bags of crap. Okay, make them pare it down or don't go to them. You just like... One of the things that happened to us, we got so much response from these posts. So something I feel like I can impress upon you is that there isn't much competition for people paying for used clothing, especially not like buy the bulk bags. Mostly people have to just take it to Value Village or I guess Goodwill for free, right? So because you don't really, you're not going to have a lot of competition, you do not have to accept from everyone so that is another thing i would do is i would screen people better it depends what your business is how you're going to screen people better the things i would do differently is when we arrived <laughs> i would open one of the bags and smell them and if they smell horribly of smoke or mothballs or mildew or feet then i would say i'm sorry i'm not buying these and i would leave the entire reason, not the entire reason, a large part of the reason that Ethan made me promise we would not get any more $10 bags for the next few months, other than the fact that we have a lot of inventory to list, is the last person we went to sold us five bags for $50. That smelled so horrible. As soon as they were in our car, we knew that we couldn't even wash that smell out. Like, yeah, most smells come out in the wash, but we were, it, it filled the whole car. It was horrible. It was disgusting. And we drove those bags straight to Value Village. So we essentially lit $50 on fire, which is fun. Open the first bag, look at the first few items and give them a sniff. And if you're getting red flags, just don't give them your money. It's really that easy. Like you did not agree to buy things from them. There's no contract there. Like if you show up and it's not what you were expecting, you don't have to buy it. And I think that's a big lesson I learned from doing this is you can say no to people. And that is often the best business decision. Mm. The last thing I would change if we were doing this again is um, another aspect of you not really having much competition is, and I got so many messages of people asking me how big the bags had to be. And I said, I started out by saying, oh, you know, just large enough. That was dumb. Um, now I tell people large black garbage bags. And if it's not, I'm going to only pay you $5 for that bag. If it's not a very large full garbage bag, it's going to be a $5 bag. And if I were doing this again, you can maybe even offer $5 per bag the first time. Because again, there is no alternative. So $5 a bag is more than $0 a bag, which is what they were getting at Value Village or Goodwill. So in total, we spent somewhere between $500 and $750 on these bags. 
I know Ethan has the numbers. He does our bookkeeping. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, I'm going to assume 750 because I probably underestimate. It's very hard to parse out exactly what we've got in return so far from those bags. Um, what I can tell you is we've done $10,000 in sales on Poshmark. We have sold a few of the hard goods and things on Facebook Marketplace, but I'm just not going to talk about those. Um, but there's some extra there. $10,000 in sales, so f in like profit sales so far on Poshmark. Um, and I would say probably, probably about 40% of that would be items from $10 bags. So I would attribute somewhere between three and five thousand dollars of those sales from the 750 that we spent um to get the bags so obviously that is a good return on investment it is worth it things i would say i learned from doing this just because you can sell something does not mean you should time is money even more than items are money so if you're gonna get less than five dollars for something then is that worth your time your space to store it your time photographing it listing it sharing it cleaning it no so if there was ever anything with a flaw in any of the bags i got rid of it immediately I just donated that because it just wasn't worth the time when you were dealing with that much volume so you want to prioritize your time if you're doing this. You want to be really harsh off the bat when you get the bags into your apartment. You want to separate and to keep and donate pretty quickly. And you want to be fairly harsh about what you're going to keep and put in your closet. That will mean every few bags you will not make your $10 back. And that is okay because there will be some bags, like we had a bag that was just filled with Columbia Puffer winter jackets. And on that bag, it makes up for the one where you didn't make it back. And it all kind of balances out in the end. You want to remain strict. Trust me, I've gotten more and more strict the more we've done this. And the, just the better it's gone. You, so, yeah, be really harsh when you bring the stuff into your house. What's going to stay and what's going to go. So now I just want to give you some of the highlights from the sales. Things I'm not going to talk about is bundles where we also sold thrifted items. It's just too hard to parse out what we made the, from the thrifted item versus what we made from the $10 bag items. Sometimes it's like 40% off. And so in my head, instead of it all being 40% off, it's okay, well, they got all the $10 bundle stuff free and they paid for these things that I made my return on. So it's it gets complicated um, when you have those mixed bundles to exactly parse out how much we made from each. So I'm just gonna tell you about sales that either were bundles of only um, $10 bag items or just single sales that we've had from the $10 bag items. Another thing that you'll see that I've definitely learned from this is that when you do this, you give a lot more stuff a chance than you otherwise would have. And the weirdest stuff sells like, we got a pair of Salvatore Ferragamo heels from a $10 bag. That was amazing. They're still in our closet. They've been up for two months. I'm not worried about them. They have lots of likes. I feel like they're going to sell. They also have gotten some attention on the US closet, which we are just now able to start selling in. So I think they'll also do well over there. We'll see. I'm not worried about them, but they haven't sold yet versus... The example I always like to use is one that Ethan was like, we need to throw this out because it was a 2013 Spartan Race finisher t-shirt. And he was just like, no one's going to want this. It's so specific. Like, why would I get it? And it sold as a single sale for $16. Someone paid $16 and $12.99 shipping for that shirt. So like, that's what I would price certain Urban Outfitters brands at. I feel like what I've learned in my entire two plus years reselling. I've only been reselling on Poshmark since October, but reselling on Marketplace for a long time. And basically what I've found is that I have a difficult time predicting what's going to sell. And it might just be my inexperience, but it might just be that it's really hard to know what's going to like be a hit and what's not. So as much as I want you to be harsh about the things you're bringing in to put into your closet, I also want you to give certain things a chance like just because 
people say this brand doesn't sell doesn't mean that and style often does trump brand more than I think we resellers would like to admit. So the highest grossing sale we have had uh, from the $10 bags exclusively was a single sale. And it is this Mustang MC1505 uh, floater jacket. So this jacket is actually a life preserver and a jacket. So that was very unique. We were just super lucky to get that in a $10 bag. Um, I think it retails for $250. So we sold this one for $110. Um, that was amazing. I think they bought it outright, so there'd be not even a shipping discount. We got 80% of that, and that was a pretty sweet deal for us because we paid at max $10. Um, I'm sure there were a few other things in that bag, but it was bulky, so it was probably the most of that bag. The next most expensive thing, which was amazing to have, um, this came from a ten dollar bag from someone I knew though, so I knew they weren't going to give me crap, or at least I hoped as much, and that was true. They were amazing. They have great style. Um, but anyway, it was this agent provocateur lace pink bra, and it was in a really like unique size, like thirty six G or something like that. I forget exactly. Um, but that brand we sells um original price for a ton and we sold that bra for 76 dollars next was another um like men's work jacket so i guess that's something this is something that valley village would charge so much for that i never would pick it up but getting it in a 10 dollar bag is so super worth it um this was an amicor polyester thick reflective men's work jacket on a size xl this sold for 60 dollars by itself um, it was in pretty good condition, like definitely structurally good condition, it had a bit of dirt and stuff, took it off. Someone just outright bought it again for $60. Next was this Aldo Genuine Leather Suede uh, Tan Trench Coat. Um, I didn't even know Aldo made jackets, but I got this. It was just genuine suede and it was amazing. Um, so we were really lucky to get that and that sold for $60. So that was pretty awesome. Mm, another genuine leather jacket. We've actually gotten quite a few genuine leather jackets. So that's been nice. I don't know why I look so suspicious. Why are you giving us this? But no, it's real leather. Um, this is the Pierre Cardin genuine leather black jacket. Men's jacket again. Um, they sent me an offer for $55. I think I had it listed at 70, so I accepted that. Genuine leather jacket and a 10 dollar rag. Heck yes. Ah, another heavy duty coat. I guess that's what sells best if you're getting them from these bags. Um, this is an Oakland heavy duty faux leather. <sighs> that's good. Keep that in there. Um, it's just a big, like, almost like a men's puffer jacket. Um, it sold for $55 in a bundle with one other t-shirt that was also from a $10 bag. Um, I pretty much threw in the t-shirt for free. Next is this, um, this sold with something that thrifted, but it was still really nice to find. So I'm including it. This is a black and white Calvin Klein dress in a size 18. I probably never would have picked this up if I was thrifting. Um, but it sold for, in a bundle, in a bundle together with 50 for $50, so I guess you could consider it having sold for $25. I kind of thought I could get more, but I was having a sale, so it sold in the sale. Next is awesome. This was a Mystique Intimates new with tags, um, like baby doll lingerie and panty set. Um, I would never sell used panties, but these were in like a bag, their own like sealed bag within a bag, and they had were new with tags and lingerie does fairly well so those sold for fifty dollars and that was amazing next in line would be a bunch of mystery boxes um i pretty much exclusively fill mystery boxes with items from the ten dollar bags uh usually some of the better items from the ten dollar bags but definitely not things we've thrifted because otherwise they would not be profitable so we've sold i don't know how many mystery boxes now 10 probably possibly less somewhere between five and 10, and those would have been filled exclusively with mystery box items. The next sale sold by itself, sold for $50, and is probably the best thing we've ever gotten in a $10 bag. It is this green Canada Goose Kids Merino Wool Toque. Canada Goose in a $10 bag. 
this bag came with a bunch of fancy kids stuff like there was a Burberry kids thing there was a Ralph Lauren kids dress like it these people dress their kids nice um not something I would do <laughs> but that's probably why I don't have kids uh, but yeah that was amazing to receive Canada Goose in there and someone just outright bought it at $50 which was awesome next is this running room unisex or I thought it was unisex reflective like running jacket windbreaker sort of thing you can see it Ethan, show them. Show them. Um, that sold for $48, and that was also amazing to find in there. I was really pleased with that. Next is a sale that if you follow me on Instagram or if you, for some reason, watch me, um, I talk about a lot because I just adored this item, and I literally almost kept it for myself. It's this Rip and Dip Bob Ross painting a cat mountain shirt, and it sold with this other color block, Rip and Dip. It sold within five minutes of listing it. Not probably because Rip and Dip is that big of a bolo, but probably because Bob Ross painting a cow mountain is that big of a bolo. Um, those sold within like five minutes for $45 in a bundle. So that was really nice. This free country purple gray, uh, like kind of fleece lined rain jacket, plaid, stop saying keywords. Um, this sold for $45. It sold as part of a bundle. So I don't think... We probably made about $20 on it and I would have definitely never picked that up at the thrift store so that is really cool to see. Next is, and this was great, and this sold in a bundle with two amazing, sorry I'm really happy, this sold in a bundle with two really amazing $10 bag finds. Um, this Free People crochet side striped sweater and this, I don't know why I'm doing this like I know where things are gonna be. Anyway, this New With Tags Classic Coach Black Belt, they sold my bundle for $60 to $65. And both of those were just really amazing to have um, from $10 bags. Like, that's that's about the best I ever hoped for is a free people sweater and a New With Tags Coach Belt. Like, what else? There's nothing else in life I want. Well, in reseller life. <laughs> this sold by itself. Oh, no, wait. This sold with a merino wool... Yes, okay, so this sold with something else in a bundle, in a men's bundle. I think they sent me an offer for $50, which I accepted. This is a Mountain Equipment Co-op red long sleeve like base layer top for men. Um, Mountain Equipment Co-op is, it's like a sportswear thing in Canada. Ignore me. Yes, that sold with a long sleeve Merino World shirt for $50 and because it was men's, I accepted that, and they were from $10 bags, so that's also why I accepted that, and that was glorious. This is a Ralph Lauren white, thick, like it was a very thick cotton, um, blah, 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 men's shirt, dress shirt, and that sold in a bundle with this denim and supply Ralph Lauren men's shirt, and those went for, I believe, $45 for both of them. Um, which I think you could push both those items for more than that, but because I got them in a $10 bag, I accepted that offer. <laughs> this Polo Ralph Lauren blue, like Aztec print. I called it unisex and I put it in the women's section of my closet because I loved it. And it actually went to my friend, Natasha. Um, her is shop Nathan's, shop underscore Nathan's on Instagram and on Poshmark. Ethan, put her information. Do it. You're so good. I love you. <laughs> um, yeah, but she saw me. She said she loved them. I actually had two identical sweaters from this $10 bag. So she also bought a mystery box with me and put them like in a bundle. So I included the second sweater as part of her mystery box because I figured keep them together. Maybe like she did say she loved that sweater. So maybe she wanted a backup in case one of them gets hurt or maybe she wanted to keep one, sell one. I don't know. Next is this Danier Genuine white leather jacket. I've actually received three Danier leather jackets in $10 bags, which is nuts. This one had quite a flaw, um, but it was on the inside. Like the, the inner lining was pretty gnarled, but the outside was no flaws. So I just disclosed that. Someone bought it for $35. I got it in a $10 bag, so I wasn't mad about that. These American Eagle Young Money Collab men's jeans sold in a bundle with a few other items. 
and the bundle itself was like $60 and they were all made up of $10 bag items. That was probably the biggest item in that bundle. Um, another item in that bundle was this Abercrombie and Fetch men's coat. And then two other like t-shirts, again, all from $10 bags. So that was a great bundle, yes please. Next is this Reebok Vintage Color Block Bomber Jacket. I might have underwatched, underpriced. I might have underpriced it. It sold within five minutes. But that could have just been right place, right time. And I really do feel like it was because I priced it at 45 and then someone sent me an offer for $34, like right away. And I thought to myself, yeah, I need a, I like sales. So I just accepted that. Maybe it could have gone for more. It is pretty unique and cool, but I sourced it for so little that I'm fairly okay to make deals in that case. I don't know. Maybe maybe what I'm learning from this is I could have made more money from all these things. But we're doing our best. Okay, let's do five or ten more and then wrap up and do a conclusion because I'm not trying to make a 50-minute video again. So this sold by itself, a TNA hooded blue checkered plaid shirt. Um, I love this. I wore it a few times because I loved it. Um, I didn't really actually send out any offers on it, but I received one for 32 and it was listed for 35. So I had to accept because that's an amazing offer. So I did sell it, but I did love it. Uh, when I saw it, I put it right into my own closet and now I'm on the hunt for something like that, but for less than the $32 that we sold it for. We also had this Oakley Navy Blue O logo men's hoodie. They sold for $31. I believe I accepted an offer. Um, I don't know if Oakley's as big of a bolo as I think it is now, but I've met someone who has m literally messaged me every time I have posted anything Oakley, including a women's shoes. So I posted my Oakley women's shoes and then I posted this sweater and I posted something else. And none of them worked for him because like, he was like, these wouldn't fit my girlfriend, these shoes and that hoodie's too big for me. And then he was like, but do let me know the minute you put up any more Oakley. And I was like, dang, dude. So I don't know if there's that many fans of Oakley out there that are like that, but now I'm gonna pick it up and message that dude whenever I get some. This, this sold in a bundle and it was a big bundle. So I could not begin to tell you what I made off this, but I just need to show it to you because look, it's a yellow tiger slash floral print, like Hawaiian colored t-shirt. And I saw this and I was like, yes. Um, I priced it at $30. It went in a bundle that was like 180 bucks. So with like maybe 15 other items. I have no idea what I earned off it. I just needed to show it to you. <laughs> Fila Skeletos trail running shoes. These sold for $30, which was a nice surprise. And I would even maybe pick that up from a thrift store next time I see those. These Scramble Veil Tudo Martial Arts leggings. I just thought they were super unique. I found them and I was like, what am I going to do with that? Definitely not get rid of them, but I don't know who wants them. Um, but those sold for $30 in a bundle. So probably sold for like 15 Here we had an Adidas classic three stripe women's zip up hoodie or zip up jacket. Um, yeah, that would have been way overpriced at Lou, not Lululemon. <laughs> that would have been way overpriced at Value Village and I never would have bought it, but it sold for $30. And it was worth it because of the way I sourced it. So if you can source videos through Tandler bags, yes, amazing. If you're sourcing it at Value Village, no, overpriced. Let's do this YSL 100% silk paisley blue tie. It was genuine YSL tie. It sold for $30. I'm not sure if I was supposed to try and get more for that. The thing is, is it's like a vintage tie out of men's ties and their pricing really baffles me but I was really happy to get $30 for something that was so small and took up so little storage time and was so easy to photograph and like oh what a pain-free $30 that was I love things like that these Zara heavily distressed jeans sold in a bundle with this north country green plaid like flannel shirt um they sold to the same person for $45 and I never would have picked up either of those things. Okay, last one. We're doing one last one. This Helly Hansen HH logo uh, pullover hoodie sold for $28. Um, I think I listed it at $35, so I was very happy with that, especially because of where I sourced it. Hopefully that gives you like a starting point of like some of the good things because 
uh, with all my caveats from the beginning and the fact that we're not actually sourcing like this anymore, I think I can give off the impression that this isn't a good sourcing, sourcing method, and that's not the case. It is a good sourcing method, it just, I think it needs to be a little tinkered with. I think it was a good base idea, and I think if you guys want to build on the idea, that's where it can go. Like, the reason we started doing this is because we don't have a bins in the area, and I didn't want to have to pay up for all the items at, again, Save Value Village, which is by far the most common thrift store in my area. So because of that, I just was like, everyone's bringing their stuff to Value Village anyway for free. So if I offer them a bit of money for their stuff, maybe they'll give it to me instead. And then I don't, can kind of cut out Value Village as the middleman. I think it's a good concept. I think it needs some tweaking. And yes, because of how much inventory we've had and because of that horrible person who gave us those horrible, horrible smelling clothes, they were horrible. Then we just took them directly to donate them. Because of that person, Ethan made me promise that we're not gonna be doing this again for a little while. Um, but let me know if you try it. Let me know if it works out. Um, I know I think I've already told a few of my reseller friends about this. I don't know if any of them are trying it, but if so, hopefully they'll like let us know how it goes. And hopefully, hopefully we can all take away from this that sourcing doesn't have to be through a thrift store. It doesn't have to be any one way. You can like get creative, get out there, get sourcing. I basically just needed to tell you guys this because this is how we've gotten a good two thirds of our inventory so far. So going forward, we'll be doing a lot more thrifting and consigning and, or consignment stores. But if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching this whole video. Hopefully you took away one or two helpful tips about sourcing. And if not, then hopefully it was at least somewhat entertaining. Subscribe if you want to see more of our videos, more of how we're sourcing, what we're sourcing, what we're selling, and just how this reselling thing is going for us. Um, we are fairly new at this, but we want to give you guys as much information and as much knowledge as we can possibly acquire. I've always been a very share with the class kind of person. So yes, we're going to be bringing some more videos for you guys this week. So do the things. I can't. I hate closing videos. I'm awkward. <laughs> Goodbye.